Welcome back to Green Plum Summit 2020. This is our very own reimagined digital customer conference. My name is Jacques Eistock, and my next guest is Alexander Denisov. Alexander is going to talk about how to ingest data into Green Plum using Apache NiFi. So, Alexander, this seems like a great mix of technologies given a typical enterprise. Can you tell us more? Absolutely. Thank you, Jack, for introduction. Um, my name is Alexander Denisov. I'm an engineer in VMware, working in the same team as Ashoka and Francisco on the products which allow connectivity from Greenplum to external systems. And I'll be happy to explain today and do a preview of our new product, which will allow and help customers to ingest data into Greenplum using an open source project called Apache NiFi. So I have to put the legal disclaimer from VMware that uh, partially states that whatever preview of features and products we do here today doesn't uh, obligate VMware legally to eventually ship those features and products. So for our agenda, I will give an introduction to Apache NiFi to those who are not very familiar with it. Then we will uh, pose a problem statement and uh, we'll review the new product called Green Plum Connector for Apache NiFi. We'll look at its architecture and functionality of each component. And then I'll illustrate how to build a simple flow using Apache NiFi. So for those who are not familiar with Apache NiFi, that's an open source product primarily built to automate the flow of information between enterprise systems. The problem domain was around for a while ever since the enterprises had more than one uh, system where some systems would produce data and other systems would consume data. And Apache NiFi provides a robust solution uh, and a powerful system to process and distribute that data among other enterprise uh, data systems. It supports powerful and scalable directed graphs for data routing and transformation logic. It has very simple but still powerful web-based user interface where clients can manage the system and can go and create flows and monitor the progress of data integration flows. It is highly configurable and is designed for an extensions. And that's what we use to develop our connector. And uh, finally, it provides good data provenance and advanced security options. So let's take a look a little bit about the architecture of Apache NiFi. It runs inside a Java virtual machine on the host operating system. Um, it contains the web server, which hosts its uh, web-based APIs for command and control. Uh, the key concept in the NiFi is the flow file. The flow file represents each object which moves through the system. And NiFi keeps track of name, value, pair attributes of each flow file and uh, its processing state. That information is stored in the flow file repository. Um, the actual content of a flow file is stored in the content repository. Uh, and the provenance repository stores all the events uh, about uh, processing of a given flow file. The actual work is performed by the processors and extensions. Those uh, components actually do transformation and data routing. And the flow controller is the brain of the system, which knows about how processors and extensions are connected with each other and uh, manages threads and gives them threads to uh, run on. And also it manages the schedules when resources will be made available to the processors and extensions to execute. Processors are tied together by the flow designer and the connection between processors is actually implemented as a queue and each queue has um, bound to its workload and by virtue of that it creates a back pressure in the system. So when we talk to our customers who already have Greenplum operational or they just plan to install Greenplum, they tell us that uh, or they already have some data integration solutions in place. They might have Informatica, they might have custom scripts, but more and more we hear that Apache NiFi is a preferred solution for the data integration problem. Uh, customers can leave their operational data, they can like transform them and they land them in the data warehouses 
or they might want to get data from their data lakes, do some transformation, and they want to make this data available for further analytics using Greenplum. So they are asking us a question, if we already have data moving through our pipelines, through our Apache NiFi flows, how can we ingest this data into Greenplum in a reliable and scalable manner so that it's available for future analysis? So let's find out how we can do that. There are a few ways of doing it. The most straightforward way right now is to use one of the processors or one of the set of family processors available in Apache NiFi, and those are database processors. The only option that you have with a database processor is to use a JDBC connection to send data to Greenplum Master. And from their own, Greenplum Master would redistribute the data across Greenplum segments for storage in the system. Uh, while it's possible to do today, this is probably not the most optimal solution because it requires all the data to travel through a single Greenplum master, and that limits the scalability of this solution. Uh, can we do better than that? Um, yes, we can do better. Um, what if we create a new processor, let's say Greenplum processor, that instead of sending all the data to the Greenplum master, will instead utilize the existing product that the VMware ships called Greenplum Streaming Server. Um, it used primarily for processing streaming data from Apache Kafka, but it also can be used for micro batch processing, which we can utilize here. The Greenplum Streaming Server uses control flow, uh, and its only connection to Greenplum Master is using control flow. Um, and then it instructs the Greenplum to do the parallel data ingestion from the Greenplum streaming server to the segments directly. And then segments can internally reshuffle data according to the distribution policy for the data. So this provides us higher concurrency, higher throughput, and it um, relieves the load on the Greenplum master. And that's exactly the features we want in our solution. So our goal is to build a um, new connector which can send data to Greenplum streaming server and utilize its technology to do the parallel data ingest. And that's exactly what we did and that product is called uh, Greenplum connector for Apache NiFi. So let's look a little bit at, in, uh, to the architecture of this solution. The actual connector consists of two components. Uh, one component is called uh, put Greenplum record processor and it's implemented in NiFi processor concept. Another component is called Greenplum GPSS adapter service, and that's implemented in NiFi service uh, API. Um, they are operating on NiFi records. And um, when we say NiFi records, we mean that the flow file, which moves through the system, uh, is assumed to be composed of individual records which then can be converted to database tuples and be sent to Greenplum for ingestion. Um, so what does the processor do? Um, it receives the flow file from the upstream component, and then it needs to convert each flow file into a set of records. By itself, it doesn't know how to do it, but it utilizes existing NiFi record readers, which are already shipped with Apache NiFi. So we can support multiple file formats in that way. We can support CSV format, we can support Avro, Parquet, JSON, and XML formats. So once Greenplum processor um, parses the incoming flow file into individual records using these readers, it will convert and transform them into database tuples. And then it will batch those tuples into micro batches and it's going to send them over to the Greenplum GPSS adapter, which is responsible for um, converting them to the protobuf messages and sending them to GPSS, Greenplum streaming server, for further ingestion into Greenplum database. So let's take a look at what will it take for the end user to design such a flow. Well, first of all, the connector is shipped as the three NAR files. NAR file is a packaging protocol similar to the web application WAR file, except it's more customized to Apache NiFi requirements. 
So the system administrator would first copy those NAR files into the lib directory under the NiPy installation. Uh, and once that is done, these components will be available from the NiPy user interface when customers would go and define new, new services and new components. So in this case, we would need to first go and create the Greenplum GPSS adapter. We can see it here listed under the list of other uh, controller services um, administrators can choose. And typically we would need one controller service instance per NiFi flow per Greenplum database. So when we configure this controller service, we need to provide two sets of configuration information. Uh, the first set would require us to um, notify where the Greenplum streaming server is located, such as the host name and the port number. And the second set of configuration information, we would need to tell it where the Greenplum database master is. So we need to provide uh, the master host name, port number, actual database name, the username and the password for the user to be able to connect to the database. So once that configuration is complete, then we would need to work on the um, record schema. We would need to decide and determine the format of data in the incoming flow files that the processor would need to handle. Uh, as I mentioned before, uh, we need to choose which record reader to use to be able to parse our flow file and uh, create records out of them. So in some cases, for example, for the CSV readers, we would need to customize the date and time parsing formats. Um, and we also would need to specify a record schema if needed, because each data record in Apache NiFi has to be described by a schema, and schema typically includes field names and field types for our data set. Schema can be either embedded in the file itself, or it can be auto-discovered. Uh, auto-discovery is actually quite expensive because the whole flow file needs to be read first uh, for the um, reader to figure out what the actual schema is. So it's not really preferred solution. Schema can also be specified explicitly uh, to the reader, or it can be looked up in some central schema repository. And usually schema is stored in our format. And here's an example of the schema in Apache our format. Uh, schema for the person, for example, and we have fields such as last name with a string type, age with an integer type, and the birth date, which is of type date, uh, logical type date in Avro, which is represented as an integer basic type. Um, so, for example, when you parse a CSV file, CSV file by itself doesn't have any information as of types for the data. So you can use uh, headers like column headers for the names, but you will need to still provide the types for your data so that we can do a proper mapping between record in Apache NiFi and the table schema in the Greenplum database. The next, pro the next step in the process would be to create an actual processor. So again, we can use NiFi user interface. We can choose a put Greenplum record processor, and the processor is available from this dropdown list. And uh, usually we would need multiple instances of a processor for a specific flow, one instance per table we want to ingest data to. When we configure Greenplum processor, uh, we need to provide information about, I mean, to provide information about uh, the record reader that we use uh, and configured previously. Um, we need to give information about the Greenplum GPSS adapter configured for our flow. We need to specify schema name and table name for the target Greenplum table. We also need to provide the operation, and we support three types of operation, insert, update, and merge. Insert operation will take uh, each record in, in, in the incoming NiFi flow file, uh, convert it into a tuple, and insert it into the target table, no matter whether similar row might exist already or not. Update is... Uh, Complementary to that, it will first try to match the record to an existing row in the database using the match columns. If it finds the record, it updates it. If it doesn't find it, it just discards it. Merge is kind of a combination of both. It will try to first match and update the row, but if it doesn't find it in the target table, then it just inserts it. 
Uh, we also need to decide how we want to handle errors in case the schema of the incoming NIFI record doesn't match the schema of the database. Uh, you can either ignore or fail on that event. And finally, we need to define the batch size, uh, basically number of uh, records to transform and uh, send to GPSS at once. Uh, the larger the batch size, the more memory is used by the NIFI instance, but less uh, network round trips it will make to send data to GPSS. So there is definitely a trade-off there. So finally, when we install um, and configure the connector and we create instances for the service and the processor, we can create the flow. And to create the flow, we need to connect uh, upstream component to our processor. In this example, this is the simplest example of a flow where we're going to read CSV files from the file system and we're going to send them to put Greenplum record processor for parsing and insertion into Greenplum database. Um, one thing you can do here, you can also decide for the concurrency of the processor. Uh, by default, the processor will run with one thread, but if you have a lot of files in your file system to process and insert into a target table, you can increase that concurrency. You can maybe give five threads to the processor and then it will um, utilize that many threads to uh, process files. Each thread will process one file and the overall uh, flow will go much, much faster. So in summary, um, we have reviewed the solution of how to make a green plum a part of your Apache NiFi data flow pipeline. We can support a variety of different data formats uh, with built-in NiFi record readers. Uh, it's possible to ingest data in parallel using green plum connector for Apache NiFi, and that product will be available pretty soon from VMware. Well, thank you for uh, listening to the presentation. If you have any comments or questions, please feel free to reach me at this email address or on the Green Plum mailing list. Back to you, John. Thank you, Alexander. I love seeing how Green Plum continues on the mission of integrating into yet another part of the data ecosystem, in this case, Apache i5. It's just further evidence that we're executing on our, our stated goals of embracing the ecosystem and the overall power of open source. So thanks again. Mm -hmm.